medical assistance and dying is uh, a physician assisted death. It's something that you can choose to do where you choose to do it and when you choose to do it. Something that has to be your decision. It's something you can change your mind at any time. It's just a method of making the suffering be able to stop when you, when you want it to stop. And I think that's a blessing. This is not suicide. It's an assist to stop suffering. And to have the choice to say, I've had it, I'm done. This is enough. If a person comes to that place, then the, the kindest thing that we can do is to make sure that when they have made a choice, that that choice can be honored. And I think every reason would be different. In my case, it's pretty cut and dried. I know it's getting harder to swallow and harder to talk and, and uh, harder to breathe, so. It can be a lonely time when you're dying because nobody wants to talk about it. It's so important that the family be w willing to set aside their own perspectives, points of view, and just to love enough to let the person who's dying be okay about it. Know they're loved and supported. And our daughters were wonderful when we talked with them about it. They said, we, we don't like it, but you have our unconditional support. Well, you can't ask for more than that. You can't take other people's pain away. And I know they're so sad about it. And they're also so courageous. Medical assistance in dying is probably one of the most fulfilling things that I do. Also one of the hardest things that I do at the same time. Um, and a big reason why I do that work it's because I actually feel like I get to give some power and control back to my patients and mostly in situations where a lot of control has been taken away from them. So you don't have control over the disease you get diagnosed with. You don't have control over if your treatment's going to work or not. And I feel like uh, medical assistance and dying gives people that control back and a say in how they want to live and how they want to die. It's a simple procedure to fill out the forms. And we went through the process and, and uh, had, the, had the approval. But the sports there with counseling and, uh, and help. depending on what track you fall into. So track one being your natural death is in the reasonably foreseeable future. You can go ahead and pick a date whenever you want to. Track two being patients whose natural death is not in the reasonably foreseeable future. They have to wait a minimum of three months um, to make sure that they have optimized any other resources, consultations that might need to be done. Um, before they would pick a date for a provision. So I kind of picked a date at the end of uh, August when my dad died. And uh, that date came and went. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's difficult because day after day and night after night, I have good nights and I have bad nights and good days and bad days. The whole timing thing is, the, I find difficult. 
Just because you fill out all the paperwork does not mean that you need to pick a date and proceed. Um, just because you pick a date and you might be right about ready to start the procedure, you can say, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore and that's okay. You can also say, you know what, I'm actually feeling really good and I want to postpone and that's okay too. I'm kind of thinking it'd be uh, Lynn and I in the room behind us there and uh, and just having the injections. It's a 15 minute process after you started it, so it's not a long thing, but. So there are two different ways that you can have a medically assisted death. Uh, most common way is medications that go through an IV. Um, it's four medications that all bring end of life in a very peaceful and dignified way. Um, and the first medication being a strong sedative that gently lets you go to sleep. Um, and so once you're asleep, you don't feel anything after that. Um, the other way you can have a medically assisted death is actually drinking a medication. But either way, it's very peaceful, dignified. People that want to see me have come and uh said their goodbyes but I don't think that'll be a big party uh, you know I think everybody be out doing something that's fun for them and uh, and just um, leave just leave quietly <laughs> <laughs>